Welcome again to Cherry Red Radio. I'm Ian McNay and I am joined again by my colleagues, Professor John Reed, Matt Ingham and Yes Expert Umi. And we're going to play a lot of good stuff today. In fact, it's all good stuff. And um, we're going to start with a track by Rush called Limelight. <laughs> Limelight by Rush and I included that because there's a remastered version of their Moving Pictures album which has um, just come out great reviews as it should be I used to love Rush when I was younger and I had all their all their albums on cassette actually in those days where one had 
cassette players in one's cars. Moving Pictures was their eighth studio album and I think one of the best. And actually the producer, Terry Brown, I got to know a bit afterwards as he's involved in a couple of other acts and uh, a very nice man. Rush, sadly, I never saw play. And of course, Neil Peart, the drummer, passed away um, a couple of years ago. So they won't be playing now. Peter Bardens is a name primarily known to me for his uh, time in Camel. He, he helped to form Camel, um, was with them for six years. And Esoteric Recordings, part of the Cherry Red World, have actually released uh, a box set called Long Ago, Far Away, Recordings 1969 to 1971, which were recorded before Peter Bardens did many other things. And I didn't know all this, actually, but he, he played with them. He also uh, played with, uh, he had his own band called Peter B's Lunars, which also included Rod Stewart, Peter Green and Mick Fleetwood. Um, went on to form uh, a band called The Village, which included two people that were later in Elvis Costello's band, uh, Bruce Thomas and Bill Porter. So he has a, he has a, great, um, he has a great history. These, these tracks on Long Ago, Far Away are very interesting. I'm going to play Write My Name in the Dust.
That was Write My Name in the Dust by Peter Bardens. Now, a few days ago, I saw a gig I was really looking forward to, which was Nick Mason's Saucerful of Secrets. And the gig was, was uh, postponed from two years ago, so I've been waiting a long time to watch that. And, of course, Nick Mason, the original drummer in the Pink Floyd, and he was playing, the band were playing, a lot of the early Floyd material. And there were some great, great versions, and they finished with a, a full-length version of Echoes, which took up most of the second half of the performance. I'm just going to play a track by the Floyd, which um, very much represents that early period, written by Sid Barrett. Here's C. Emily Play. <laughs> Tries but misunderstands. Oh, she's often inclined to borrow somebody's dreams till tomorrow. There is no other day. Let's try it another way. You'll lose your mind and play. Free gates for me.
put on a gown that touches the ground. See Emily play by Pink Floyd. Which I actually think, just jumping in, in, that's possibly one of the greatest pop 45s of all time. But there we are. Well, it's a great record. And uh, I think we miss Sid Barrett in many ways. He was, uh, he was so in- innovative and he was a bit of a crazy character. And I think we miss those kind of people these days. And it was the Floyd's second single, the first one obviously being Arnold Lane. And... I actually have a question for you, John. See if you can answer this. So, See Emily Play reached number six in the singles chart in 1967, and they had to wait for another 12 years for another hit single. Can you remember what the other hit, next hit single was? Another Break in the Wall. Very good. It's got to number one. Excellent. Okay, we're now going to move on to Umi, who's going to play a Yes track for us to enjoy. Hi, thanks for having me back again. Uh, it's good to be in the hot seat once again with another Yes track. Today I'm going to play for you what is a very special choice for me as this is my all-time favourite Yes song. And all members of the lineup are at the top of their game, working overtime on this song in my opinion. The song was first released as the opening track on Fragile from 1971 and was written by John Anderson and Steve Howe as they were travelling around Scotland in the back of a van and reportedly went through many roundabouts on the way. Awed by the scenery, Anderson came up with the lyrics like mountains come out of the sky and they stand there as the mountains would disappear into the clouds. Also, the lake mentioned in the chorus refers to Loch Ness. So there's a little bit of backstory into the lyrics if you're interested and I could sit and talk about the musical composition on this song all day, but I think the best thing to do is just play it. So without further ado, here is Yes with Roundabout.
come out of the sky They stand there Twenty-four before my love I'll be there Yes, with Roundabout. Now I'm going to pass on to John Reed to talk about Miller Anderson. Thank you. Thanks, Sumi. Yeah, so similar era, really, to Yes. Uh, Miller Anderson, and you mentioned Scotland earlier. He was a Scottish uh, musician who uh, based himself in the South, but one of one of Rock's great journeymen, really. Played with so many acts, T-Rex, Mountain, Keith Hartley Band, list goes on and on. Um, and in the early 70s, he signed to Dear Am and made two records, one under his own name uh, and also one with the group Hemlock. We're going to play a track from his solo album, Bright City. This is from 1971, one of those two Dear Am records. And we're going to play the last track, which, uh, from, to my, from my point of view, sounds... I would describe this as funky folk. It's got a bit of a shuffle to it. And, uh, yeah, it's not as as rock based as some of the other things that he was doing although he also did some other some singer songwriter material on that record so this is the last track from bright city this is called shadows cross my wall Sailing by We have found the answer The sailors cry 
Ah, but just as they were saying that, their seas ran dry, leaving just the shadows across my wall. I harvest it as endless. The farmers cry. But ten thousand people swept their fields just like a fire, leaving just the shadows across my wall. By this timeless joke, but I ain't laughing too much. No, I ain't laughing much at all. Shadows Cross My Wall uh, by Miller Anderson from his album Bright City, 
which is being reissued on our esoteric label very soon. So now I'm going to hand back to Ian to chat about Roger Chapman. Roger Chapman. There is a really distinctive voice. You know, obviously, every singer has a distinction to a degree with their voice, but Roger Chapman, I think, is out there just so instantly recognisable. Anyway, Trey Red has acquired many of his older recordings, both with family and street walkers. And uh, we've got a box set coming out, which is called Moth to a Flame, the recordings in 1979 to 1981. It's a five CD. And I'm going to play you the title track, Moth to a Flame.
That was Moth to a Flame from Roger Chapman. And uh, in that box set, there's the album Chapo, Live in Hamburg, Mail Order Magic, and many other outtakes, demos, uh, alternative tracks, and some live material. I don't know if I need to talk much about Roger Chapman. Obviously, he came to, fa he came to fame with family, then had the Streetwalkers with, with John Whitney, and did many, many solo albums. And uh, there's going to be a great campaign, that I think, as we get through and work, uh, and work through that catalogue we've acquired. OK, next up, something a bit more contemporary, at least from a Cherry Red point of view. So we're into the early 80s now. Um, Girls at our best were, I guess, a quintessential example of that early 80s post-punk sound, but with a definite pop uh, twist to them. I first discovered this group when their song Getting Nowhere Fast, which was, I think, an early early single, first single, first B-side, was uh, covered by The Wedding Present. And then I went back and, and found some of their old records. And, uh, yeah, th so they were from Leeds, and they released a number of singles. Most of them were indie hits, and one album, Pleasure, in 1981. And uh, that's now being given the three-CD deluxe treatment with some previously unreleased live uh, material, in conjunction with the band and also i believe an extra john peel session that wasn't on the previous cd and so on some demos as well um so that's one to look forward to we're going to play two tracks uh by girls at our best the title track of the album pleasure and the single from it fast boyfriends
So you just heard Pleasure and Fast Boy at Friends by Girls at Our Best, uh, both of which appear on a new three CD set on the Cherry Red label. So Susie Quattro is someone that's really lived a life, and I saw her play very recently too. 71 years old, she was just stunning in terms of her, her voice, her confidence, her stage presence, and of course she's got some great, great material for many, many years and still many years in her career and still making records. And Trey Red have put out uh, a box set called The Albums, 1980 to 1986. And that, uh, that's got some good tracks on there, some great tracks on there. I've chosen The Heart of Stone. Well, I gambled, played the game Took my chances once again Guess I'm old Heart of Stone from Susie Quattro and that was her 26th solo single. Uh, gives you an idea of the length of her career 
and that was from uh, originally from the attraction. That was originally from an album called Main Attraction. She co-wrote the song with her keyboard player, Chris Andrews. 999 was a punk band I used to go and see quite a lot um, in, the late, in the late 70s, early 80s. And they had a few minor hit singles. We've done a, a box set on Cherry Red, which is called... Goodness. Which is called 999, a punk rock anthology... 1977 to 2020 and I've pulled off that album the track Homicide to play now by 999 which was a single that came out in November 87 which reached number 40 in the singles chart and they had quite a few hit singles and they did 12 studio albums all together I always like playing new tracks on the uh, on Trey Red Radio and we don't have so many new tracks from our own releases so I found three, and I have cheated a bit, I have to, I have to confess. I have taken them all from um, 
a CD put out by the magazine Uncut called Main Sounds. And actually the standard of this CD was, was I thought, really high compared to some of the CDs you get with magazines. I'm going to start with a track taken from the Black Keys new album called It, it Ain't Over. That was the Black Keys, It Ain't Over, and it's taken off their new album, Dropout Boogie, which is actually their 11th studio album. I had no idea they'd made so many albums. Another new track I really like is by Tomalin, who I haven't heard of before. Uh, and then Tomalin is actually Sarah Beth Tomalin, and she's only made two albums. And this track is off the second album, and it's called Easy.
Easy by Tomarine, which is off her second album called I Don't Know Who Needs to Hear This. And then I really like the track by Joe Shawnko, 
I probably pronounced that wrong, sorry about that, which is called Come Back. Joan Shawco called it's called Come Back. It's from my new album called Alter. And she's originally from Melbourne in Australia and she's now living in Nashville. That's all I could find out about her. But I thought it was a super track. So anyway, there's three new tracks from uh, different bands, all not to do with Trey Red, but I thought they all warranted a play on Trey Red Radio. I'm gonna move on now to Mark Armand which is uh, someone you all will know. Uh, and he's dear to our hearts at Trey Red. And uh, we've put out an album called Stranger Things, which uh, is, is a box set because there's many extra versions and live versions, etc. in there. I'm going to play two tracks back to back, one called Glorious and one called End in Tears.
you know it in your heart. Do I really need to say, although we try again, it always ends the same way. Ends in tears, ends in tears. You know it always ends in tears. Oh, it always ends in tears. No matter how we laugh, how close we grow day by day. Although we've learned to love, it always ends the same way. Ends in tears, ends in tears. taken from an album called Stranger Things, which originally came out in 2001. And I'm now going to pass you back to uh, Professor John Reed, who's going to talk to you about heroes and villains. Yeah, so occasionally there's a little departure. We did things like Tommy James and the Shondells on, on Grapefruit, but this is the first various artists compilation of its kind on the label. Um, any fan of the 60s will know that Los Angeles was a hotbed of musical talent at the time. So many great bands came out of California and specifically LA. Capitol Records was based there, a lot of the Electra bands and so on. Um, yeah, so this box set in, mixes, as with all our box sets, uh, relatively speaking, household names with, with obscurities. I'm going to start by playing two tracks from the box set and then we'll talk a little bit more. This is... Uh, let Her Dance by the Bobby Fuller Four, followed by Let's Live for Today by the Grassroots.
people seem to find And how they're in a hurry to complicate their minds By chasing after money and dreams that can't come true I'm glad that we are different, we've better things to do May others plan their future, I'm busy loving you As long as I'm with you We'll take it nice and easy And use my simple plan You'll be my loving woman I'll be your loving man We'll take the most from living Have pleasure while we can Two, three, four Sha-la-la-la-la-la la 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 for today Yes, you just heard two tracks from Heroes and Villains. Let Her Dance by the Bobby Fuller Four, who are probably best known for their version of the cricket's I Fought the Law, which in turn inspired the Clash hit, which I'm sure many of you know. And the grassroots Let's Live for Today, which was a big hit in America, and was covered over here by the group Living Daylights, which, by coincidence, we just picked up the rights for. So, yeah, so the box set really documents what was a really vibrant scene at the time, So much music coming out. I guess you start with the whole folk rock scene, the frat rock scene of 65, um, and then it moves through the emerging psychedelic sounds and a lot of stuff that we would now describe as sunshine pop but was peculiar really to the West Coast labels at the time. So we're going to play two tracks that reflect those differing styles. A quintessential example of sunshine pop with Mark Eric's Move With The Dawn, followed by the folk rock group, The Birds, with their track, Why. Pretty soon the sun, it's gonna rise. I can tell you know the hurts in your eyes. Thank you. 
just heard Move With The Dawn by Mark Eric and Why By The Birds and now I'm going to hand over to Matt. In fact he's going to chat about Luke Haynes and one Peter Buck who definitely has some birds records in his collection. Absolutely thanks John. Yeah I wanted to include um, a Luke and Peter track this week. We um, or this month rather we usually uh, have a you know a lot of Luke Haynes and Peter Buck. We, we went to see them live. Uh, Peter was over here he brought his American band and they did five dates, culminating in two shows at the 100 Club um, around the bank holiday period. And they're fantastic. It was really good. The gigs had been postponed because of the pandemic. So it was really nice to see them live, see them play some of these songs live. There's a brand new album coming later in the year, which is great. But the track I've chosen is my favourite track from their, their first album called Beat Poetry for Survivalists. Survivalist. Kill. 
Luke Haynes and Peter Buck with Beat Poetry for the Survivalist. And I'm going to pass back now over to John for something brand new. Yeah, brand new, but from the past. The past is the future. That could be our cherry red motto. Uh, yeah, so we've worked closely with the House of Love for many years. And we've got a, a sneak announcement still, or announcement coming up about some new recordings. Won't give too much away about that. And some of you will know we've represented their first album, the, the, the stuff they recorded for Creation Records for many years. Um, but what's been long overdue was a definitive box set that, that profiled their subsequent time with Fontana Records when they issued a number of albums and actually enjoyed their big greatest successes around the world. Uh, so I think it's coming out at the end of June, new box set called Burn Down the World, eight CDs, no less, of House of Love goodness, including many unreleased tracks, in fact, I think it includes everything that was released at the time. We're going to play a previously unreleased demo of one of their earlier singles for Fontana. This is the Beatles and the Stones, the Chocolate Factory demo. 
was uh, a track you probably haven't heard before because it's never been released. It's the Chocolate Factory demo of the Beatles and the Stones by the House of Love. House of Love, of course, made their name when they signed to Creation and that label, of course, was co-run by Alan McGee. Now, McGee, as, as fans of the label will know, had his own band on Creation and they were called Biff Bang Pow, which was a group that really became a kind of closely guarded secret amongst fans of that era the sort of C86 era of, of jangly indie bands. I have to say myself, I bought every record by Biff Bang Pow at the time. I was a huge fan. Never saw them live, um, partly because they didn't really play many gigs because McGee was too busy running the label. It's been a complete labour of love, I have to say, to work on a new box set, which 
embraces every single recording put out by Biff Bang Pow and quite a few that weren't. It's a six CD box set called A Better Life, Complete Creations, 1984 to 1991. Uh, comes with Alan McGee's Blessing and includes uh, numerous unreleased tracks at every album they put out. And uh, from that, we're going to play, I suppose, the closest that Biff Bang Pow came to a, a bona fide indie hit. This is Love's Going Out of Fashion from 1986. Love's Going Out of Fashion by Biff Peng Pao from the new box set A Better Life. And now Matt's going to talk about another group who were at one point signed to both Cherry Red and Creation Records. That's right, John, but not at the same time, obviously. <laughs> I'm going to play a track from one of our favourite bands, Felt. We've just released, um, well, re-released, I should say, their 10 albums, Lawrence's 10 albums, a stunning new cd versions with brand new artwork and obviously the remastered job that he did on them is just brings them right back to life i'm going to play one of my favorite tracks it's called mexican bandits and it's taken from i think it was the second album the splendor of fear
that was felt with Mexican bandits. And now I'm going to hand back over to John for the last couple of tracks. Yeah, so we're going to go back to the world of prog for the first choice. Uh, we recently bought the rights to uh, the catalogue of the band Jade Warrior, who made a number of albums across the 70s. They evolved out of psychedelic band July, and we're slowly but surely going to be reissuing their albums in a remaster form with bonus tracks, the usual treatment, on Esoteric. We're going to play, I mean, their music, I should say, was quite varied. Some of it was kind of jazz, and, and as with a lot of bands in the progressive era, quite exploratory. We're going to play one of their more straight-ahead rock tracks. This is the opener from their second album release from 1971, and it's called Three-Horned Dragon King. <laughs> The three horned dragon king within a cage of passion, you will find him wearing midnight, breathing fire, and taking life from a tarnished ring. And the ropes of love you thought would bind him are lying broken, making patterns in the dust of the bedroom. Setting sail for a different shore And you wish to God that you were stronger
That was Three Horn Dragon King, a uh, quintessentially prog title from Jade Warrior from their second album released, which is now available on the Satiric on CD. In the early 90s, I bought a couple of records by a band called Spitfire. They looked the part, they had the mop haircuts, the beads, the 60s look. They definitely liked the birds. And uh, they were signed to a label called Eve Recordings, uh, which we recently purchased the rights to. Um, Spitfire, yeah, had a couple of indie hits at the time, uh, re recorded for Eve and then had a couple of records thereafter. We're going to play, as part of our Under the Covers series that we like to run on Cherry Red Radio, one of their cover versions. This is from their first EP, Translucent, which was produced by That Petrol Emotion Steve Mack. This is their version of the theme from Six Million Dollar Man. was Spitfire doing their cover, or psychedelic cover, if you will, of the theme from Six Million Dollar Man. And that ends another episode of Cherry Red Radio. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you all soon.